which of the following is not true okay so i think this question is related to binary trees not binary search binary trees they are asking not true just focus on these questions very carefully so we have to pay much attention to the not true not false okay so not true means they have given the few right options and few wrong options so we have to pick the wrong not true means wrong answer pick the wrong answer always pick the wrong answer so if you see the options quickly a tree is a connected graph without the cycles okay so next option every tree with the six nodes contains at least two leaf nodes and the fourth, third option a tree with the 20 uh, 200 nodes contain 990 edges every node in a root rooted binary tree has a parent okay so if you see among all the options fewer right and uh, fewer like one of the option is wrong the option one is wrong is uh, like fourth option is a wrong option you can see every node in a rooted binary tree has a parent okay that is not a true option right so if you take the first option tree is a connected graph without the cycles yes there will be no cycles in a uh, tree and every binary tree with the six nodes can contain two leaf nodes at least two leaf nodes so what is the formula for calculating the leaf nodes for a binary tree so n plus 1 by 2 right so n is nothing but 6 right 6 plus 1 by 2 so it will be 7 7 by 2 you can take a floor or seal so it will be 3 or 4 leaf nodes so a tree with the 200 nodes can contain 199 this option is also right so the not true one is a every node in a root binary tree as a parent this is not the right option next question so which of the following sorting algorithms has highest average case time complexity so they have given the few sorting algorithms and they are asking highest average case so what is the notation to donate average case theta notation so this is a theta notation uh, worst case we use a o notation big o notation okay and this is called best case this is best case so this is called average case this is called worst case this notation is already we know so they are asking highest average case time complexity if you know the time complexity is table very quick uh, direct answer the time average case time complexity for merge sort is what's a merge sort so n log n okay that's a average case even for the worst case also n log n for the quick sort it's also n log n okay for average case what's the worst case so if, if you see take the worst case quick sort also will take the big of n square for the worst case heap sort in the both the cases it will be n log n okay and the bubble sort in the both the cases it will be big of n square okay so the right option is the highest average case time complexity is bubble sort because in the average case it's a big of n square in the worst case also big of n square if you compare which one is smaller this one is a smaller this one is smaller this one is smaller right this one is the highest one so the right option is bubble sort which of the following sorting algorithm efficiently sort the array in an ascending order what do you mean by ascending order small to big okay small to big so we have an array like let's take an example so suppose we have an array of data so this is my array so let's take a data of uh, 10 5 1 uh, 0 like 2 like 20 i want to sort this data if you sort this data it will be 0 1 uh, 2 5 10 20 this is a ascending order so which one is the best sorting algorithm okay so how to uh, like compare based on time complexity which time complexity we have to take worst case or average case or best case always take the worst case complexity if you take the worst case complexity it will cover both best and also average case always consider always consider the worst case scenario only always in the real time we consider the worst case scenario worst case scenario means worst case time complexity let us uh, quickly write the time, com time complexity for the all the algorithms for the insertion sort what is the worst case time complexity ok. So the insertion sort worst case time complexity is big of n square ok even for the selection sort also big of n square and bubble sort also big of n square means 2 for loops 2 loops and for the merge sort if c big of n log n see so this is preferable right it is taking less time. So this is a preferable. So what is the another way of asking the same question? Okay, which is the best sorting algorithm for already sorted data? Which is the best sorting algorithm for already sorted data? So best sorting algorithm for already sorted data is a insertion sort. So it will take only big O of n for the insertion sort already sorted data only for already sorted data. 
okay so already sorted data yes the answer is merge sort because its time quantity is very less we can use this algorithm for sorting the data in the ascending order next question which of the following is true uh, about the sequential search to search in an array of n elements okay they are asking for the sequential search what do you mean by sequential search linear search okay so we have a two type of searching algorithms mainly linear search and binary search let's quickly discuss the linear search linear search means searching for an element in the group of elements linearly comparing element by element okay suppose have this data have this data like uh, 3 like 10 like 0 1 and 100 like 97 so these are data how many elements are there here 1 2 3 4 5 6 n equal to 6 number of elements so like if you want to search linearly i want to search for the key i want to search for the key 0 how many number of iterations are required first time you compare 0 is equal to equal to 3 false 0 is equal to equal to 10 false 3 is equal to equal to 0 so from the index index 2 is right answer it will return the index of an element in, in, index of an element so here always compare the number of comparisons required comparison iteration, uh, iterations for linear search if you see the linear search so it's very simple so it requires big of n big of n iterations for worst case time complexity okay for the worst case it will require big of n how come big of n suppose i want to search for 97 97 is there inside my array of data or not so we have to compare all the elements you have to come to the last element right how many number of iterations it requires six number of iterations six comparisons we require six comparisons right for this one we require six comparison suppose if you want to find the first element it required only one comparison only one comparison so this is called best case this is called best case and the last element searching or middle element searching is called worst case just note down this explanation very very important okay so if you are searching for the first element in the array of data for linear search best time complexity is big of n okay so best case time complexity will be big of n what do you mean by average case so average case will be average case will be big of n by 2 sometimes okay there's a three complexities we have for the linear search worst means big of n best means big of n and average means big of n by 2 what is the best case time complexity if you are searching for the element first element worst case means if you are searching for the last element average case means if you are searching for the middle element okay so now coming to the options quickly so best case uh, running time of the sequence search is big of n best case running time of the sequence search is big of n worst case running time of the sequence search is big of n square you can delete this option we don't have a big of n square because we don't use two for loops only one for loop is required for sequential search or linear search worst case running time complexity of the sequential search is n log n that's not the not the right answer so we have a confusion between one and the two so if you quickly see the uh, two options they are seeing the best case best case best case best case complexity will be always big of one right just know how i explain if you want to search for the element 3 how many number of comparisons required in the for loop only one comparison so 3 is equal to 3 so element found break the loop number of iterations are completed only one iteration one comparison is required so the best case running time of the sequential search is always big o of one not big o of n this is worst case this is worst case worst case means maximum like if you want to search for the last element or any element in the like so worst case will be big of n so best case means big of n worst case means big of n but in the key paper okay in the master key paper in the response sheet of us also they are given the second option is the right option they are given the best case is big of n but that is not the right option so you can note down the question number so from the master key the question number is 144 the question id is this one and raise an objections raise objections please raise an objections on this one and with the explanation whatever you have seen the explanation write a simple for loop code and see the number of iteration explain with a simple example okay and upload the photo in the like portal okay the answer is best case running time complexity for sequence such as big o of one not big o of n right so they are giving best case is big o of n this is not the right option the best case is always big o of n this is the explanation note down next question so which of the following is a recurrence for the worst case uh, running time of an binary search okay so like if you take the complexity of a binary search it will be big of log n right 
So, if you have a simple formula, if you know the formula for the recurrent simulation, so very direct answer. So, this is not the right option, not the right option, and this is a right option. So, n by 2 because uh, we have a comparison, right? We always divide the array by half, 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 right? So, suppose if you take this is an array, this is a 10 size. So, next in the first iteration, this is the first iteration. In the second iteration, you divide the array into two parts, okay? This is uh, with a length 5, and this is a length 5. Again, you divide into like two, two parts. So, these are keep on dividing, okay? That is a binary search algorithm. So, the complexity will be T n by 2 plus 1, okay? So, here the plus 1 is nothing but constant. In place of plus 1, you can give any constant. C means constant. Yeah. So, that is all the questions for data structures. So, we have one question called uh, just note down the question number 144. You can raise an objections. The best case time complex fee is big of n, not big of n. Thank you. The protocol data unit for the application layer in the internet stack represent with a dash. So, in a PDU, I mean protocol data units in physical layer OSI model, there are seven layers are there. Out of those seven layers, the first one physical layer. This physical layer can represent the data in bits format. Bits are nothing but zeros and ones. Coming to data link layer, data link layer can represent the data in frames format, in frames format. Coming to network layer can represent the data, third one, network layer, network layer can represent the data in packet format, packet format. Coming to transport layer can represent the data in segment format, okay. So what they are asking is, the protocol data unit for the application layer in internet stack is messages is right answer and this is for physical layer for physical layer is this one and this is related to transport layer and frames are related to data link layer frames are related to data link layer so answer is messages right answer next question one second okay how many bits are allocated for network ID and host ID in the given IP address? So, IP address is given 25.193.155.233. So, this is a given IP address and in this IP address, how many IP addresses are? I mean, how many parts are the host ID and how many other parts are the network ID they are asking? So, in general, in IP addresses, IP addresses are represented with four parts. So, generally we represent the first two parts are the network IDs, net IDs and the other two parts are we represent with host IDs. But here the number is specifically the number is given here. So, in this case what happens is whatever the here four octets are there 25 this is one octet 2, 3 and 4 there are four octets are there but specifically we have to look at the first octet this octet and in IPv4, in case of IPv4, there are 256 numbers are there, the value or we can say the range of IPv4 is 256. But there are 5 subclasses are there, class A, B, C, D and E. So, for class A, the numbers are reserved from 0 to 127. For class B, 128 to 191. For class C, 192 to 223. For class 4, 2 224, 224 to 239. Coming to for class E, 242, 255. We have started with 0, so that ends with minus 1. Coming to here, in this case, okay, so here, how many, first look at the octet 1. So, this octet is belongs to the class A. The first octet is belongs to the class A because the number is 25. 25 number is there in between 0 to 127 number. So, that is class A. Class A, here in class A situation, how many host IDs are there and how many net IDs are there. So, in this uh, scenario, the first one is net ID and the rest three are the host IDs. These are the host IDs. And each and every number we represent with one byte, one byte, one byte is nothing but one octet. So, the first one, only the first one is the net ID and the rest three are the 24 bits are the host IDs because one number is, is equals to a zeros and ones combination 8 bits. Here 25 we have to write the combination of zeros and ones total 8 bits we have to write. Suppose I am telling like this. So in this case 8 bits because one byte is nothing but 8 bits. So that first one is 8 bits net IDs 
and the remaining 3, 3 into 8 is nothing but 24, 24 bits are the host IDs and the first uh, 8 bits are the network ID. So, the second one is the right answer. The next question. Next question, DAS is a connectionless and unreliable transpro, I mean, transport protocol. See, in case of transport layer, in uh, OSI reference model, transport layer uses two types of protocols. Those two types of protocols, the first one is TCP IP protocol and the second one is UDP protocol, user datagram protocol. So, obviously, TCP protocol is a connection oriented protocol. This is connection oriented protocol, connection oriented. And the UDP protocol is connectionless oriented. Here there is no connection in UDP protocol, connectionless. Connectionless and there is no reliability. We can say unreliable protocol. Here UDP is unreliable, TCP is reliable protocol. They are asking about connectionless as well as unreliable. So ultimate answer is UDP, user datagram protocol is the right answer. Okay. Coming to TCP is just a reverse of UDP is TCP. Here this one is connection oriented as well as a reliable protocol. IP, I mean IP internet program will use for uh, each and every devices 20 IPv4, IPv6. There are two IP addresses are that and coming to HTTP protocol. HTTP protocol is using for web browsing purpose. Web browsing purpose this protocol is using including HTTPS also. Next question. MAC address is the dash bit number, MAC address, media access control. So, MAC address is using in data link layer, OSI model out of those seven layers. The second layer, data link layer uses this MAC address. So, this MAC address is also known as physical address. MAC address is also known as physical address. And it is also known as NIC address, NIC network interface card address. So, this MAC address uses 48 bits, 48 bits. If you need into uh, uh, bytes, then 48 by 8 because 1 byte is called 8 bits. So, that it comes here 6 bytes. 6 bytes are 48 bits. So, MAC address uses 48 bits. Coming to IP address. IP address are again two types. One is IPv4 and IPv6. In case of IPv4 uses 32 bits. And in case of IPv6, 128 bits uses at a time. So, they are asking about MAC address and the MAC address uses 48 bits. And this MAC address is also known as physical address. And MAC address is always fixed. It does not change. Fixed address. But IP address is the logical address and it will change. So, answer is here 48 bits. Next, the address resolution protocol ARP. What is the function of ARP? Okay, suppose if you know the IP address, already you know the IP address of particular device and find the MAC address. Suppose here if IP address is known, IP address is known and find the MAC address. In this case, we use this protocol ARP. The reverse of this RARP, address resolution, pro I mean reverse address resolution protocol. Reverse address resolution protocol. In this case, in this scenario, what happens is if you know the MAC address of any particular device, MAC address is known. Already MAC address is known. And you need to find the IP address. The reverse of the first one is known as RARP. So here they are asking about RA, I mean ARP, address resolution protocol. What is the main function of this? Finding the MAC address that correspond to the IP address. It means Already IP address is known and find the MAC address, finding the MAC address. In this scenario, we use address resolution protocol. Suppose the question asks you like this. Okay, MAC address is already known. Find the IP address. In that case, ARP, I mean RARP protocol we use. So, the answer is the fourth one. The next one. Packets of the same session may be routed through different paths. Okay, packets of the... Uh, Packets of the same session may be routed different through. The two famous protocols in transport layer we use TCP and UDP protocol. Transmission control protocol and user datagram protocol. TCP protocol is no connection here and UDP, I mean TCP protocol is connection oriented. Connection oriented protocol is TCP protocol and UDP is connection less oriented and here we will get the acknowledgement. It means it is reliable. 
and coming to UDP, it is not reliable, no acknowledgement, not reliable. So these two protocols are generally using for packet transferring purpose. Next question. The topology that uses a single cable to connect the network nodes. So bus topology is right answer. In case of bus topology, we use only one main cable as a center cable. To this cable, computers are going to connect in like this. So this, this topology, this type of topology is known as bus topology because one single cable is connecting for the remaining all the nodes is known as bus topology or multi-point connection we can say bus topology. Ring topology, ring manner, star topology, star like only and in case of mesh topology n into n minus 1 paths and n into I mean n into n minus 1 by 2. This is these many number of paths will get in mesh topology and very complex to connect. So question for this. I mean, answer for this question is bus topology. Now let's see this question. The Unix command that prints new line, word count and byte count of each file is what? Uh, so we know the answer is WC. Why? Because we know that WC is a command in the Unix which is going to tell you that how large a text file is. It is going to count number of lines in a text file, number of characters, number of words and uh, number of bytes a particular file has. Okay. So, WC is a command which is going to tell all these things whatever I have delivered to you, okay, fine. Now, let us go for the next one. Unix command that prints lines matching a, a pattern is what? It is a grep command, okay. In grep command generally I am, we are using uh, this kind of things like dollar grep. Suppose that in my file Unix, okay. Unix word, I want to search such kind of lines which has a unique word, okay, Unix. Uh, so I am taking one some sample file, okay, fine. So now what is happening? In this sample text file, wherever Unix command, uh, wherever Unix word is there, all those lines it is going to give output in my output, okay, fine. So remember this, grep command is going to find what? It is, uh, it is going to find some uh, matching kind of things, okay. So, so many grep, uh, so many other things also associated with the grips, but the main thing is what? Matching, okay. The Unix command that prints lines matching, so lines matching, okay, lines matching a pattern is what? Grep command. So, grep command generally we are using for the matching kind of things. Just, just I have given you one example that if I am using grep, dollar grep, Unix sample text. So, wherever in this text file, wherever Unix uh, word is there, like Unix is an operating system. This is a one line is there. So, that total line it will display in uh, total line he will display as an output okay so some other other uh, lines also there in that file sir so, like uh, we are saying that uh, uh, unix uh, is an operating uh, is an operating system so another line he is going to uh, print okay so hope you understood this is the meaning of the grip okay now let's go for the next one which of the following types of operating system service keeps track of which user use how much and what kind of computer resources okay this answer is very simple actually it is accountability okay so the mean term itself is indicating that accountability okay fine so how how you can re recognize this one what is said that which of the following types of operating system service keep track of which user use how much which user use how much and what kind of computer resources okay fine so what did uh, what accountability is going to do as based on the user it is going to give information that this user has used uh, this much percentage of the CPU like I am saying say 14 percent of the CPU and uh, how many process it is uh, it has used like two process or one process okay fine number of process also you give, give the information and what percentage of the disk he has used and what percentage of the memory he has used all this information it is going to give by it is going to give. So, this kind of things we are saying, sir, accounting. Okay. So, it, the term itself is indicating that accounting. See, see in general also, accounting meaning is what? Uh, we are keeping the information that how many, uh, like in any organization, uh, if any person is working, how many days he came, okay, how much work he has done. So, that means all these things we are, we are making, we are collecting as an information, that information we are saying as an account, okay. So, here we are saying accounting, here, okay. So, the next one, Dash provide an interfa uh, interface to the services made available, available by the operating system, system calls, okay, system calls. 
see operating system is providing services through the system call like it is a folk system call or uh, print uh, print is a system call or read is a system call all the services operating system is providing all this called system call ok. So, operating system is providing uh, its services through some function those functions we are saying as what system calls. So, answer is what system call. Let us go for the next one. The process that are residing in main memory and are ready and waiting to execute are kept in a, uh, on a list called what ready queue ready ok. So, let us see this once again the process that are residing in main memory ok and are ready and waiting to execute that uh, those such kind of process we are collecting inside the ready queue ok. Let us see this one uh, it is the best to take uh, process transition diagram to understand this one. So, I am taking this one see this is new state this is ready state in this ready state I am maintaining ready queue ok. So, suppose that we brought few process from hard disk and we kept inside the main memory like process p1, p2, p3 and p4 ok fine. Let us go for this and here CPU is there that is also called as running state ok running state this is running state we know this ok fine. So, now this is CPU ok. Uh, so, what is happening here is process p1, p2, p3 they are waiting for their execution. So, this state is uh, this state uh, and this queue is called what sir ready queue. So, we are keeping such kind of process which are waiting for their turn for the execution ok. Here if you are observing p1 wants CPU, p, p2 wants CPU, p3 wants CPU, p4 wants CPU all this process we are keeping where we, where we are keeping we are keeping inside the ready queue. So, this queue, this queue is called ready queue hope you understood this one. So, what what what, what will happen short term scheduler will make a decision that which process will go on, on uh, CPU next ok. So, suppose that he has uh, made, a de made a decision that process p1 will go. So, it is selecting this process it is giving this information to the dispatcher dispatcher is uh, scheduling this process on CPU. So, how hope you are getting this idea how it is happening ok fine. So, overall sir what is this is the process that are residing in main memory. So, where this ready queue state is present sir main memory ok fine. So, let us say this and ready and ready and waiting to execute are kept on a list called what list this list is called ready what ready queue ok ready queue ok fine. Let us go for the next one consider the given uh, here let us see this one consider the table given below and find the average waiting time result for non preemptive SJF ok fine. So, let us see this one uh, without wasting much time on 0 if you are observing process SJF shortage job first shortage job first. So, what we need to do just we need to find what uh, average waiting time average waiting time we need to find by using what SJF algorithm let us see this one I am changing my color I will go with the red ok fine on 0 which process came process P1 came. So, we are scheduling process P1 it is running for how many units of time it is running for 8 units of time. Now, if you are observing 0 to 8 remaining 3 process also came inside the ready queue or not fine. So, here I am taking ready queue. So, how many process came process P2 process P3 process P4 all these 3 process came hope you understood this one ok fine. Now, next which process you are going to schedule next process which I am going to schedule is whichever process has the shortest bus time. So, out of this 3 which process has shortest bus time if you are observing so process P2 has 4 why because P4 has 5 so any of 4 is lesser than 5 so that is why I am going to schedule process P2 P2 it will run for how many units of time it will run for 4 units of time. So, it will become 12 ok fine. So, now next process which I am going to schedule is obviously we are going to schedule process P4 then process P3. So, process P4 uh, it is running for 5 units of time it is 17 next process P3 uh, 9. So, it is going to become 26 ok. Let us see why because he said that we need to calculate the average waiting time. So, before that we need to calculate first completion time and turnaround time then I will go for the waiting time. Okay, first will I will calculate the completion time. Cam completion time for process P1 is what 8, process P2 is 12, process P3 is 26, process P4 is 17. Okay, fine. So now let's see uh, turnaround time. Turnaround time I am taking here. Turnaround time and waiting time I will take here. Okay, TAT turnaround time. Formula for this one is completion time minus arrival time. Let's see this one. 
एट माइनस जीरो एट ट्वेल्व माइनस वन इलेवन ट्वेंटी सिक्स माइनस टू ट्वेंटी फोर सेवनटीन माइनस थ्री फोर्टीन वेटिंग टाइम वेटिंग टाइम वेटिंग टाइम इज वॉट टर्न अराउंड टाइम माइनस बस टाइम सो एट माइनस एट इज वॉट जीरो इलेवन माइनस फोर इज वॉट सेवन ट्वेंटी फोर माइनस नाइन इज वॉट ट्वेंटी फोर माइनस नाइन इज फिफ्टीन ओके फाइन फोर्टीन माइनस फाइव इज नाइन सो वी नीड टू फाइंड द एवरेज वेटिंग टाइम ऑफ दिस वन इफ यू आर ऑब्जर्विंग दिस इज ट्वेंटी फोर ट्वेंटी फोर प्लस दिस वन हाउ मच इट इज 24, 24 plus 7 is 31. 31 by uh, total number of process are 4. 31 by 4 is what? 31 by 4 it will come. Ha. Huh, 7.75. Okay. So answer is what? First one. Now let's see this one. Which of the following is not shared by threads in multi-thread threaded process? See here. Generally, what is happening? You have to see, understand this one. so this is code data file okay code data file and uh, each thread has its own separate is what this is what process stack and registers stack i am writing as s stack and register r r for registers stack and registers so this is a multi threaded process if you are observing this threads are sharing code data file but each thread has its own separate what stack and register stack and register so that's why which of the following is not shared by threads in multi threaded process is what stack because uh, each thread has its own stack okay fine so but the remaining thing if you are observing they are sharing 